Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're back at it with another video. Today we're gonna create a, a PowerShell script to change the time zone on a computer connected to the domain. So essentially, if you had more than one or only one computer connected to the domain and you wanted to remotely change all of these computers to the correct time zone, so they are on the correct time server and the correct time zone, that's what we're gonna cover today. So hopefully you can take something away and use it either in your home lab or in your uh, production environment. All right, so to start this video off, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to our domain connected machine. This is not the Windows server, but this is just a computer that's on the network that we are gonna manage its time server. So one of the prereqs that we, we need up and running is gonna be the um, Windows remote service or remote management service. We need that up and running. So let's go ahead, head over to the services panel, and we're just gonna double check to make sure that that is running. All right, so as you can see here, this is the Windows Remote Management, um, and it is running, and it is considered manual. So if you wanted this to be a regular thing, or if you're going to use this service um, maybe weekly, daily, or something like that, maybe you wouldn't want to change that instead of manually to automatic. Uh, but for the purpose of today's video, we're going to leave it just like this. All right, so after verifying that the service is up and running, we are also going to, since we are on this machine, we are going to jot down or take note of the computer name and we're gonna use this on our server to connect from PowerShell. Um, so again, we're just gonna run this command right here to pull up the computer name. And then we're just gonna jot this, this name down right here, the full computer name. All right, so we're gonna switch over to our server, which is where we're gonna execute this script. So the first thing that we want to do is to create a computers.txt file or a text file that we could use to read from the computer so name. I'm just going to create mining documents I have already created the document and added the computer name but it's going to look just like this simple uh, text document it's got the computer name and that's all we need for now all right so now that we have the computer inside of this text file we can go ahead and start creating this script it's pretty simple it's only two lines but first we're going to start with the computers very or we're going to make a variable and we're going to label it computers and then we're gonna um, set that variable to get content, which is gonna pull the computer name inside of this file that we had just created. We're gonna specify a path. Uh, so an easy way to go about this is to open up, if you were to go to the like, file, the file. So you can go to the actual directory and then you can just copy it from the top. So just users, administrator, documents, and then just right click, copy address, and then we can just paste it right here. And then we have it. All right, so now that we had defined the computer's variable, you could go ahead and create the next line, which is where we're gonna invoke a command for that computer or for every computer that is inside of that computers.txt file. So we will start with invoke command. And then we're gonna specify the computer name. So if we were to, to maybe do a specific uh, computer, just one computer, we could set it right here. I don't know, I don't remember what it is. I have some crazy name. Um, but since we had set the variable computers, we could just go ahead and place that here. So for every computer inside of computers, this command that we're gonna write will uh, execute. All right, and then we want to now run the actual command or specify the command that we are going to um, run essentially. So all we wanna do is just do the inside of the curly brackets, we're gonna do set time zone with the ID. But before we do that, um, since we don't have a ID for a time zone that we want to use, let's go ahead and just run a PowerShell uh, command real quick to see what um, we have available to use. So again, we're gonna do get time zone and then we're just gonna do list available. This will list every time zone that we could use along with its ID. So we're just gonna pick a random one and then you're just gonna copy. And next we could specify whether or not we want the output of this command to display inside of the current PowerShell window. So we're gonna run or type uh, pass through you don't have to put that. I like to see the output. Uh, and then we're gonna just specify the credential. And we're gonna use a blank 
variable. So this way it will ask us every time when we run the script, it will ask us for a username and then a password. All right, so then we'll just control S to save. And we'll just say time zone. It's gonna save it as a .ps1 script. Perfect. Let's go ahead and clear this out. And then let's run the script. So here, as you can see, it has a pop-up dialog just asking us for the username and password. This is going to be any uh, username or password that you have defined previously inside of your domain. And then once you see the output, that is pretty much saying that we had a successful execution of this script on this desktop computer. And then just to show you, we had switched back over to the computer that was connected that we had just changed the time zone on. So we're just gonna pull up the time information. I click and adjust date and time. And then we should see the time zone that we had just changed to. So as you can see here, this is the time zone that we had set. It is a different name for whatever reason, which threw me off as well, but it is the correct UTC. And I already verified that that is the change. Um, and then you can see here that we are connected to the time server, which is the lab that I had created and that we were just connected to. All right, so that's going to conclude today's video. The whole reason why I went or I created this script and did this lab at my house was because I am in a workplace where I hear IT guys talking and I heard a problem that they had or they couldn't resolve. So I wanted to run it at home to see if I could figure it out on my own. I am not in a professional setting to um, do any IT functions or anything like that. So this is where I practice. I try to listen in on what they're doing, maybe what problems they're having, and see if I can replicate it at home, which is exactly what I did. And I recommend everyone get a lab so they can learn themselves. So with that being said, as I always say, never stop learning.